Hello everyone, I'm Theresa Walsh and this is Art from the Heart of St. Augustine's Church. Today, we're still um, in the, on the topic of uh, blooms, feathering, um, uh, stippling. It's uh, the same topic. However, today we have a different subject. Uh, we're still uh, doing musical instruments, but uh, last time we did guitars. And today, we are going to paint the saxophone. Now, it looks very complicated, but the good news is we're not going to do a realistic version of the saxophone. So it's more of an impressionist version. And uh, that means um, it would be something that uh, would represent the saxophone, but not exactly a realistic image. Yes, um, I think it's better to describe it more of a stylized image. Uh, the one we're going to do today, that would be a stylized image. So the first thing we have to do would be to draw a sketch for a saxophone. And then, so let me start. Okay, and the first thing would be to get the basic shape of the saxophone. So here I have this sort of triangular shape. So I'm just going to get the, make a triangular guideline. Okay, well, it's not really that triangular. So let me, let me just darken the line so you can see what is it actually I've drawn for the guideline. So that's the first thing. And then the next bit, so that's this, is this. So this one is more of like an S. And then something circular. And then we follow up here by making another thing that's something like an S. Again, uh, be mindful that these are only guidelines. So later on, we will be erasing this once we have uh, drawn our actual sketch. And then this bit over here. So this bit is also like a triangle. Okay. And there you are. This is our basic shape for our saxophone. You see the similarity in the shape. Well done. So now we add some details, not too much of it. Again, this is more of an uh, impressionist uh, or stylized version, uh, depending on which way you're leaning towards. Okay, for what I'm doing, I would say it's more of a stylized version because I am actually going to um, paint some borders. Um, well, that's what I was thinking of. But later on, we will see what we actually have at hand uh, and take it from there. So um, the next bit would be to draw um, the actual shape around these guidelines. Then we will erase the guidelines. Okay. We shall start with the actual outline based on this guideline. So I see here that this bit is too thin compared to this one. Okay, let me begin with this uh, end, which is uh, somewhere here. So let's ignore this first. As we can see from small, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we will follow that idea uh, in creating the shape, the actual shape of the sketch. So I will start here. Okay, so I follow this. I draw a curved line here. And then I follow this as well. But since there's a curved line there, I should curve downwards as well. Makes, making sure that this part is not smaller than this. So remember from small, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So this shape is okay. Then we go down. 
we need to make this a little more curved. Okay. This is okay. I think we need to make some adjustments here on this side because it seems to be a bit thinner. Okay, so that side is done. But this is still a bit uh, too narrow compared to this part. So I'm going to go a little higher here so that the thickness here is um, greater than the thickness here. Okay. Again, that uh, we will follow that logic. Okay, fantastic. Now, we would need to erase the guideline that we initially drew. So a little bit here outside, a little bit here outside, a little bit there. Now inside, we have lots of lines that we need to remove. Okay, we're getting there. Okay. So, oh, that's amazing. So now we have uh, this shape of a saxophone increasing in size from this point, going to that point. So we're doing very well here. Now the mouthpiece, as you can see, the mouthpiece is like a trapezoid, so like that. Is it too long? There's a way of doing this, we can actually measure it. In this case, this saxophone is almost the same size as this pencil, which is similar to this. So we also measure this one. I think this is just the right proportion. So now we draw the mouthpiece. And yes, uh, if you've noticed what I did there, I used pencil to get a relative, um, the relative size of um, the object or the subject that we are painting. And it's not just a pencil. You can also use your brush uh, to do that or whatever item is available. You can always compare it relative to, uh, let's set some item like uh, your pencil or your brush or maybe a sheet of paper, depending on what you have. So if it's the brush, we can always compare. Let's say that's the proportion, that's the proportion. This, mind you, is slightly bigger than this one, slightly longer. Thus, this area is also slightly bigger. I know this area turned out slightly shorter, but that's okay, because if it's at an angle, then this would definitely look shorter, because as you can see, it's a different angle here. It's really just um, like a profile of the side of the saxophone. Here, we're facing a little bit forward. And you can do that. Um, if you want the saxophone to face you more, you can do that as well, and you can uh, flip it over. Imagine having a real saxophone in front of you. You just have to do that sketch of the real saxophone, depending on which position it's facing. So that's actually what we're doing now. So the next thing is, I need to put major markers on it. So what I mean by that is the major um, qualities or identification that the major characteristics that would identify the saxophone. For example, this bit over here, this bit over here, and of course, this round um, things that goes throughout the saxophone. So I have um, several of these round things. Oh, and this lines, the connection. So we'll do this first. So we have that now. Uh, we have the mouthpiece. Hmm. This one I think is very important. 
So we will have uh, this piece over here, like that. Oh, maybe a little bit more 3D. Again, we're doing a very stylized or impressionistic uh, saxophone. It will become more stylized later on. Um, and the reason is I'm going to put outlines on it, a black outline on it. So now we have this major bits. And um, how about this part where you adjust it? So um, we'll put something here. Yes, like that, which is this, like a triangle facing in. And then we have we have some things you press here, circular things. So one, two, connected to your saxophone. Oh, and don't forget this bit. So going around. We follow, we follow the shape of the saxophone. Okay, and that's like parallel lines going in. And then around. And then here. There you go. And now we have another one which is something like um, something you press, I, I believe. And then we have this circular object here. Okay, that's our first one. Then we have some other here. Now we can start um, relaxing and then just putting some more circles that would identify this to be a saxophone. Oh, I think I put it on the wrong side. Oh yes, I did put it on the wrong side. So I think my circles should be on this side, but don't worry, it's exactly a mirror image. So that one like that and then this one like that and another one like that fantastic and then um, what else do we have um, from this side um, more of those circles Again, in reality, these are not in exactly these positions, but rather these are more just representative. Okay, so this one we have, um, yeah, we have another one here. Hmm. And another one. And another one. So we have one there. And then here at the bottom. Yeah, they should be okay. And here. I have I have this thing that connects it, so I'm gonna draw that. And then there's this line that just goes through that space. And this is going to be our stylized saxophone. So here is the drawing. I hope everyone was able to follow that. Again, if, if for example, you have more circles than this, that's fine. Because again, this is just representative. 
this is not a realistic uh, painting of the actual saxophone. And again, it can face different ways. It can the saxophone can be tilted a bit backwards or tilted um, towards the front or maybe a bit more sideways. It depends. So if you a good thing is if you have a real saxophone at home, you can actually look at it from different angles. So you can study and gain some reference and then you can um, sketch it the way you want to sketch it. Okay, now we are ready to paint. And the first thing we're going to do is just to spray the base the layer here. Um, choose a color that you like, but again, mix the colors thinly. We're doing wet and dry. And the reason for that is so that the paint can uh, dry quickly. So in this case, I choose orange as my base. But again, that will just be a thin coat of orange. Really very dilute with that. And we have to make sure that we can see our sketch. And then the next thing would just be to let it dry. Once it's dry, we put our next coat would be which would be the actual color that the, we want our saxophone to be. And the uh, drying won't take long because we did wet and dry and today's weather uh, is not that humid. So it will dry faster than usual. And uh, also, let me see, yeah, it's not uh, so thick either. So um, we will be able to uh, paint the base color immediately. And it doesn't have to be completely dry when we do the base color. I would like to use yellow ochre as my base color. Okay. So this is going to spread a little bit, depending on which area we're painting it on. And it doesn't have to be just exactly inside. Um, the object that's okay uh, if it spreads out because we're still on the topic of feathering and the uh, blooms and uh, okay, let me just see no oh, wonderful as you can see here it's already mixing together so uh, we are doing very well and the next color that I would like you to get would be burnt umber I'm going to get some burnt umber. There we go. I'm just going to put it here on my palette. And then I am going to add some water. Just mix that there. And then we are going to uh, wait for our base color to dry a little bit more, but not too dry, because we have to allow the paint to spread. Uh, yes, okay. well, let me see if it is dry enough. No, it's not dry enough, or probably this area. So we're just going to paint here. Let me, let me get my round brush. And get my round brush. There you go. But again, uh, before we use any of the brushes, we have to make sure that they are they are wet, but not dripping. Okay. So in this case, I am now going to dip it into the brown paint. Paint that curve over there, and just do it really relaxed. Yeah, like that. And then here as well, so we have, so this one is more like drawing. So we just draw the lines here. And just like um, 
any of our previous activities, if we have any excess pain, we just lift it, for example, this part. Okay, we're just lifting the pain so that we can still see the details. And then we just let this dry. Okay, I want this to look softer. So I want it to have that smooth gradient, the smooth transition of color. I think I put a little too much water. I'm just going to lift it. And there we go. So now we just let it dry. And then we continue with the next part once it has completely dried. Yes, the next part would be very interesting. And that is because it's going to be dry on dry and it will show our saxophone. So we finished the part where we applied the feathering technique, that we, where we have blooms, where um, we have that transition of colors. So now uh, we uh, would need to wait uh, for it to dry so that we can do the next um, part, which is the painting the details on our art piece. It's almost completely dry and now we can uh, sort of draw the details. Yes, I say draw because we're actually painting over the lines that we have sketched. So we're painting the details now. I'm just uh, using black uh, pigment. Okay, so for this one, let's say there's the line there, another line there, another line there. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So there we go. We're starting to have some shapes on top of the saxophone. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect circles or perfect straight lines. And the thickness does not have to be uniform. So don't worry, just relax and enjoy painting it. Yes, and that's the important bit, that we enjoy painting our saxophone. Actually, that if we enjoy painting whatever it is we are painting, not just for this particular subject, but um, for any subject or topic, it should make us feel relaxed and enjoy what we do. Again, if the paint spreads, that's fine, do not worry. So we're just following the sketch. I'm going to turn the page around, make it easier for me. Okay, we're doing very well here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I chose the color of the background, which is orange, because I like the color. And same with yellow ochre, which is the base for my saxophone. So that means you can choose any color you want for your saxophone. There we go, we're getting there. And then the circles, more of those circles, make it look more like a saxophone. Again, if it spreads just like this, that's all right, do not worry. It's still beautiful. It still applies um, what we're learning. Here, some lines. Here, more lines. 
I miss anything if I miss a lot. <laughs> okay, this circle over here, which actually connects that part of the cephalopod to this one, and then this straight line over here. Yes, even if there's an object here, I'm still counting the space in between the lines that I am painting. So now it's just this one. Oh, let me see. Oh no, it's not just that one. That's fine. Well, so this is our very stylized uh, saxophone with uh, using a background of our choice using um, a base layer of our choice so all the colors are based on what uh, we want so if we actually want the saxophone to be red with the background red and this highlights red we can do that we can just do three layers of red so it depends on what we want now for the stylized uh, uh, painting what's important would be the outline because it's actually what gives this uh, subject the shape on the paper. Well I hope you enjoyed this session and see you uh, on the next topic still uh, on um, feathering and uh, we will have uh, we will show some more gradients uh, some more transitions and then uh, we'll see if we can uh, do some stippling as well. So see you next time. Bye-bye.